Looks crooked, doesn't it? Chris and I and Sam are out here in the yard and today we are starting to move forward with the process of putting the polar back together. It might fit, or it might fit good enough. If we get it low enough with its gasket. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that would be the engine display. It goes there. The throttle will go here, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I got to figure out about that Simrad. Yeah, when we get the polar, I'll put the template on it and see. Yes. Okay. I mean, wherever that is, doesn't really change any of the wiring or anything. And then for these speaker holes, I just got covers for those on the sides because I'm just going to get a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah. I'm not going to put a, speak, a stereo in. Ignition, because of the size of it, might have to go right here. Put it right there. Use up more dead space. Yeah. You have a jack plate control, right? Just a basic. No, it, it actually, I got the one that goes on the steering wheel. Oh, okay. So Better. we don't have to mount a switch. Engines, throttle, yep. possible GPS, backbone so you can link this and get your gauges and engine readout on your uh, Simran. It's a Simran that we have in here. Right. Right? I mean, with this engine display, you really don't need it. You know, I'm doing that to my boat right now. And the only reason is because where they mounted it, I had to like sit up and look down to see what my engine was doing. I did that only because I didn't have a good view sure. of that. Yeah, let's yeah. do that. This is the top of the line one. It's yeah. got everything. So then we'll just, we won't even put in a fuel gauge. We'll just use no, that. Use this. Hold on, Carrie, let me fix my hair. Okay, fix that. Okay, all right. Okay. You look good. Hollywood, okay, all right, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, nice, nice. Okay. That's getting a little long. So today, what we're going to be doing is we already got the auxiliary switches in. I put these in the other day. We still have to get the power of these guys up. Put this new steering column in and got it all drilled out, mounted. Today, we're going to be mounting the start and kill switch. We already got some holes drilled. And actually, I thought I was going to have to drill some bigger holes because I am from Texas and it's go big or go home. We're not going home today because we don't have to go big. We already got these holes in this big saw blade nicely in there. We'll cut this guy out. We'll get this beauty mounted in here, nice and straight. And then we'll get up underneath all of here. Let's see. Yes. Fun for everyone. Slow and easy always wins the race, boys and girls. So, it looks so you don't think fun. we should level out the center console? So lifting it up, is no problem because that area is not going to break. I don't know why it's got so heavy on that. I'd lift it with one arm. It might be able to strap down or something. Yeah, it might have been stuck on something. Stuck on you. We've got some wood got right here. Got a down deep in my soul. How about it? Just, we actually have a level. Yeah, it looks unlevel to me. We're good. I'm thinking we're golden. All right. Right inside the center console. I always keep it tight. Off of the Uno cut for all the Spanish speaking folks out there. And you reap your reward. Smooth cuts. Doesn't get bigger. Yeah. And then this yeah. mounts nice yeah. and flush. Yeah. That's why we go. Mel, 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 I'm gonna just trim this up, ride with it. So we're just gonna keep trimming this guy out. Has designed this to be exactly how he wanted it. And the specs are point on, and so we're just going to trim it out a little bit more so we can fit this start and kill switch. Always keep it tight. Always take the battery out of anything you're working on because you don't want to cut your finger off just the fiberglass. Great safety tips, Sam. Safety tips, always. I'm full of safety tips. PPE, always. And no, I do not have my latex gloves on today, and I don't know why. I'm living on the edge. So we got a little issue with this fixaw blade. I don't like the way it made the last cut. It's kind of slight lip to it, if you can see it. I haven't cleaned my fingernails today, but I'll get my pocket knife out later. We'll get that taken care of. <laughs> so I'm going to do adjustment on the uh, jigsaw blade. We're going to make sure that thing is true and straight. Everything is perfect because that's what we do. We fix boats perfectly. So we are back in our uh, working on a uh, another little kicker motor. This one's a... Yamaha two-stroke, uh, 15 horsepower. We have pulled out the uh, the old Transom 2000 here. Fully adaptable, adjustable, universal fit. Lock up Transom, two by six and some clamp. But see, so we got it mounted up here. The complaint was that it just will not start up. We are going to attempt to start it up here in a minute because it is a two-stroke. You gotta mix your oil if it's not done. 
on board and this one is not done on board so it's got to get done in the fuel tank a couple things that we did check for sparks we had spark on both of them check for compression we had compression in both cylinders i usually go spark compression fuel where most of the time when people bring these little kicker motors in there it's almost water or gunk or a dumped up carburetor so checking for the spark was quick and easy pull them off look for it Thanks for that, Sam. Do the bubble technique. Love Always. it. So we rolled those out because they were quick and easy. Then then we took the carburetor off. And we've got the carburetor inside. Because every time someone says, yeah, 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 I put good gas in it. I swear to God, there's good gas in it. This seem to have more water than gas. There was 100% more water in here. So much that it actually pulled up. Are you looking at our little uh, oil soaks that we have there? Although that looks like that should be fuel. That is all water. And I mean, it funneled up inside here. It was all through the carburetor. It's just a fuel filter. I mean, it literally had more water than gas. The other interesting thing is we were starting to take it apart. You look on this side, get a bullet little check valve there. Uh, when I pulled it out, there's not was sitting right there and that nut actually goes to the other side of this. So that's what we found inside of it. We're gonna pull all the jets, reeds, everything out that we can, clean it, soak it, get as much water out of there, make sure there's no problem. Sam over here is gonna purge the engine of all the water, the fuel lines, the filters, and put it all back together. And you think it's gonna run? I know it's gonna run because awesome. we fix boats. There you go. We got the whole cut out, the specs had us planned and uh, just because I'm um, OCD. Particular. Yeah, yeah, OCD a little bit to the best. I don't like things to be perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here and get this guy. We're gonna look at the lines and everything, get it lined up the way it's marked. And we're going to take our permanent marker here. Guess what good a, a dry permanent marker is? None. <laughs> None. Zero, goose egg, <laughs> goose egg. So what we'll take here, what we have is a torpedo level. No, it doesn't shoot out of a torpedo. It just kind of looks like one if you shoot it real fast. You see that? We'll lose this, use this guy right here, set him up here. We'll check our bubble and make sure that we're good and level. Get a little bit more on it. I like it. Take our marker here now. We're going to get this for our mounting hardware. Torpedo. You see how fast that was? Fast. A concept of torpedo. It's Sears Roebuck. That's right, it is Sears. That's wow. like old school. That is old school. All right, we're going to make sure okay. we're good and level. Mm -hmm. We've got a full bubble in the middle. Oh. It's not. Oh. Okay, we're looking pretty good. A little more, though. A little more. Looks like, uh oh. There we go. Oh, maybe just a little more. We're going to have to find yep. something else. We're going to okay. have to find something else. Wow, we're right on the money. What? Woo -hoo. Nice job. Oh, yeah. Woo. Got that. I see. That looks pretty good, right? I'd say so. I'm saying that's perfect. <laughs> that's good. Looks crooked, doesn't it? I think you're looking. Well, it's yeah. the, the way it's sitting. Somebody have crooked eyes? No, yeah. yeah. Oh, you know what? You might have to take the whole plate off. So uh, it's been kind of a, a group effort here. We've, we've been working on just getting this whole um, center console ready. A little bit of the auxiliary switches yesterday, the helm. So we tag teamed this. We had to actually helm. He uh, lined all this up for us yesterday, drilled some of the holes out, got it all lined up, jigsawed it out. I came by, drilled the holes, and mounted it in. So why do we have to get a new steering wheel? Oh, uh, because it's, it's rusted off to the, uh, it doesn't have any size on it anymore, so you can't get it off. Oh, okay. Plus, I just, I mean, if we're going all new. We trim this out, take this off, so yep. then you actually can physically see, see it. where it's going to sit. Yep. Or what you can even do, as you can take the gasket, because I believe this has a gasket. I was paid, yeah. It has, look, all this pops off, it pops off, and we can get back here to just this one part right here that actually mounts to the console. So let's cut the stencil out so we don't have all of this stuff obscured in our view. They call this all. Sam just mounted the throttle. I ordered the steering wheel. It's not here yet, but it'll be, I ordered a cool one. Got the ignition panel in. First got these switches in. Slowly but surely, making progress on the Polar. Maybe another month and we'll be out riding it. Oh, uh, we are doctoring up and laying out gonna have a little foresight when we get all the electrical back in the boat our plan is that this is actually going to mount right into the center console where we have our engine controls our engine brain kind of doing a dry fit kind of layout just to see how we want to run these wires so this is actually going to go into the center console into the back you have your acr fuse for your acr for your house and your start this see a post is going to be your house battery, which is going to run through this switch. Here's going to be a fuse for all your house stuff. This side of the electric panel is all going to be dedicated to house. I'm going to put a grounding 
bus in there so we have a common ground for everything and then this side over is all going to be dedicated to the motor and the start battery so the start battery will come into here got the brains mounted right there i think what i'm going to end up doing is mount this right here one thing that i hate about outboards is whenever they put this stuff in there it already looks pretty crazy and then every time i go underneath the center console it's this huge rat nest of this and everything else is zip tied it and modified it and it just looks awful so i'm going to try to kind of make it look a little bit more linear and organized in the sense of all the house stuff is going to be to the left of the center console and then to the right is going to be anything happen to do with the motor start electronic throttles all that so all of these i'm going to try to get them nice and pretty so they all run if i can get this lower I actually might just run them around it and a nice little wire loom or something and then have them all come together in one bit of a loom where they'll all connect this is the harness that will go back to the motor all these other ones are the ones that are going to go to the electronic helm the throttle and the display and they're going to run up the back of the center console out of sight through a loom up and to that it won't look like a huge giant rat Rats nest. Dry fitting and laying it out. I mean, it, it probably only takes you a few minutes to mount this stuff, but if you mount it in the wrong location, then you gotta go back and then redo it and find a new spot. So just trying to have a little, before we pop this in there, hopefully all we have to do is mount it, hook up the batteries, and then hook up whatever devices are waiting. Like uh, we'll have the fuses for the constant side, for the float switch, for the bilge pump. And we'll probably have a fuse for like radio memory or something like that. You sure make it sound simple. It ain't simple. <laughs> uh, this layout, I probably, only because I've been nitpicking it and have changed it a couple times, just because aesthetically I didn't like the way that it looked. Probably put about eight hours into just getting to right here. That includes making the cables, procuring all of the stuff, putting on here and thinking, okay, do I want it to look like this? How do I want it to look like that? Even making up my uh, little labels. All right, cool. Look at this guy's over here smiling at himself. I am. That's what it's, it's like. On his phone. I'm like a cat with a paper sack, easily amused. I got a lot to answer, you ready to go. So happy with that. Everything looks smoothly, everything looks perfectly. We we'll go ahead and uh, put the cover on her now and Ash lined up with the steering. Matt's gonna get the steering wheel right now. We're making waves. Yeah, progress. Making waves, yes we are. Mm -hmm. 